Hello again, and welcome back to Vinyl Fury. Um, just have a few records here today that uh, yeah, I have uh, picked up recently and I have listened to, and uh, hopefully this will be uh, short and sweet. Um, the other day I stopped by Fry's Electronics, and I've talked about them before. Uh, it's a big electronics store. It has a, a small vinyl section with uh, pretty good prices. And uh, I stop in there once in a while just to see if anything's different. Um, they did change their display. It used to be like wire racks that were not very good for uh, records, but they've since put them in uh, wood crates so you can flip through them, and that's a lot better. Um, and I've seen this there before, uh, just after it came out. And it was really cheap then, but I still didn't get it because I wasn't that interested. But it was even cheaper. And I listened to the record, and it was good enough that it was worth what I paid for it. Uh, this is the most recent album from Filter. It's called The Sun Comes Out Tonight. It came out, I think, about a year ago. And uh, definitely the best Filter record uh, in a while. Um, the last two records that they put out were very so-so uh, at best. Uh, this one has some pretty great stuff some classic sounding filter songs a couple that even sound almost too much like hey man nice shot their huge hit from 20 years ago um but it's good uh, some great melodies uh, production's pretty good um you know just some of the better filter material in the last decade so uh, it was five dollars and ninety cents and uh, I think previously it was $7.99. I haven't seen this record for more than $15 anywhere. Uh, I think on Amazon it's like $12.99. It's really inexpensive somehow. Uh, it's out on Wind Up Records, which is a pretty big label. And besides being a pretty good record, uh, the vinyl is actually really sweet. It's on this gold vinyl. And looking at it, it kind of seems uh, opaque, but it's actually transparent. And when you look through it against the light, it's kind of a champagne color which is uh, pretty sweet. Um, sounded pretty good on vinyl. Um, definitely worth the $6. And uh, if, you, if you're if you a fan of Filter at all, definitely check out the record. It's um, definitely better than they have been for a while. Um, Filter was actually one of the first real shows I ever saw back when uh, I was a teenager and after uh, Welcome to the Fold came out. I saw them. Uh, that was a great show. That was 2000. It was, it was good. Uh, the other record that I bought while I was there is another record that I've seen before, just didn't really feel like paying the money for it on vinyl um, for a few reasons. But uh, this is uh, the first John Mayer album, Room for Squares. And uh, as I've said before, when this album came out and he first came out of the scene, I wanted nothing to do with it. I wasn't interested at all. But eventually, the genuine talent and songwriting uh, broke me down and I had to admit that I liked it and I even like this record still um, you know there's some pretty syrupy poppy stuff on it but there's also some of his you know great legit guitar playing uh, like Neon that's one of the best tracks on here but I had heard this on vinyl before and uh, it's just too long to be on one record. I think one side is about 25 minutes, the other I think is about pushing 28. So the volume is pretty low. You gotta, I had to crank it, you know, a notch or two above where I normally would. So the surface noise was higher than it should be for a brand new record. It's also pressed at United, and I, you know, I've had my words about United record pressing. And uh, for good reason, they're just, it cannot seem to put out a quality product consistently. Uh, it's almost consistently uh, not great. But uh, it was $15.99. I just figured I should get it. Uh, there's a printed inner sleeve. This is definitely a repressing. I don't know when they repressed this. I think it's been in the last two or three years. It was, it was hard to find for a while. And, you know, when I did see it, it was like 22 bucks. I was like, no, it's just not worth it. But 16 I can live with that. And, uh, but I wouldn't say that it's 
it's necessary to get on vinyl. I mean, it sounds fine on CD. I have a uh, Super Audio CD of it, which I can't even listen to the Super Audio portion of it. Uh, I don't have a receiver that will accept that digital stream yet, but uh, just to have it on vinyl, complete my collection. Well, close. I still need uh, the one after that, heavier things. But I'm not quite ready to pay for the, definitely not an original pressing, uh, but even the music on vinyl pressing is a little spendy, but maybe someday. Anyway, uh, last two. I got these. Um, there's a store not too far from my house. It's within like two miles. And I only go there once in a while, but I just felt like going in and I did find uh, a few things that uh, were interesting. And normally I wouldn't pay more than a dollar for a Wyndham Hill record. And most of the time you'll find them for a dollar and they're in great condition. Uh, this one was four dollars. It's by Michael Hedges. I thought that I had a Michael Hedges record. Turns out I didn't. I think I've just heard somebody mention them specifically in the Wyndham Hill catalog as being uh, superior. So it seemed interesting so I got it. Uh, and it's a fantastic record. Uh, beautiful guitar playing uh, some of the best that I've heard as far as you know solo acoustic stuff goes he's uh well he was very talented he passed away in a car accident uh, I think about 20 years ago something like that uh, this is this came out in 1984 uh, he's highly revered as one of the, you know the great uh, solo guitar players and uh, this this was a really enjoyable record to listen to definitely worth the four dollars absolutely and another one that was four dollars and um i usually don't pay that much for ecm records either uh, even though you know most of the time they are worth it i can usually find some for you know a dollar two three this was four and i've heard colin walcott before at least i've heard the name uh, but this also has Don Cherry and John Abercrombie on it, so that to me seemed like it'd be worth $4. Uh, the album's called Grazing Dreams. came out in, in uh, 1977 on ECM. It seemed like kind of an odd mixture t to me. Uh, Colin Walcott plays sitar and tabla, and uh, it is good. And the mix of the other you know, jazz instruments like trumpet, wood flute, um, it was kind of clashing to me at times but uh, still very interesting and it's mostly free jazz um, definitely worth having and I'll have to give it another listen to see um, you know what else I can get out of it um, definitely not that uh, ECM records hardly ever disappoint that's for sure uh, they haven't disappointed me so far so uh, yeah call and walk up all right, I think I made that under 10 minutes. I hope so. Um, maybe I'll make another video here. I think I have some time. Um, other than that, I do have like two pre-orders that should be coming in the next two weeks, and they're uh, pretty awesome. But uh, until next time, of course, thank you for watching. Take care and enjoy your music.